If you could have one ability from Tears of the Kingdom in real life, what ability would you choose? I recently saw this question on the Tears of the Kingdom subreddit from a user named Eclipse8301. They only propose auto build, recall, ascend, and ultra hand, although we will be going into some other abilities as well and whether they would be a good choice for the real world or not. But my proposal is that recall would be the best ability on this list. In fact, I don't even think it's a competition. Recall wins by a huge margin. So I'm gonna break down for you why all of the other abilities are very mid, and then we're gonna get to recall, and I'm gonna show you why that one is the best. Cue the first title card. Ascend is the ability which allows for you to swoop up through whatever ceiling is above you and pop out on the other side. That's really cool, but also in the modern era, we have these things called elevators that basically serve the exact same function. We also have escalators, ladders, those funny chairs that you sometimes see near stairs. Oh, and get this, <gasps> stairs themselves. Horrifying, I know. But if you are an able-bodied person and you only need to get to the first or second floor of something, then why not use stairs? It's a great workout. So Ascend seems pretty cool, but lacks any real world application because the only thing you're gonna get out of it is skipping leg day. Next. Yeah, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's pretty obvious why the camera ability is uh, not that helpful in the modern era where we have cell phones. The same thing goes for the map ability. But if you bring those two devices together, then they do have one really powerful ability, which is the ability to sense nearby objects as long as you have taken a picture of them prior. For instance, you could take a picture of your car keys or your wallet, and then you would never have to lose them again because you could just follow the blipping noise on your Sheikah sensor pad. But even that could be replaced by a modern GPS tracking device. So uh, it still isn't that great. Next. Ultra Hand is where things start getting crazy because it's essentially the ability of telekinesis and gluing stuff together. Need to grab a soda that's nearby but just out of arm's reach? Ultra Hand. Want to move some heavy construction work equipment? Ultra Hand. Want to lift a 200 pound dumbbell? Use Ultra Hand. Although then you won't get a workout, but Ultra Hand is basically the ability to move any object of any size anywhere you want within a 30 foot radius. And that by itself is awesome. But then, the ability to glue stuff together? That makes it even cooler. You could fuse your sandwich or taco together so that all of the parts in your food don't keep moving around. Or if you wanna put up a hammock, you could easily just fuse both ends of the hammock to two different trees and boom, hammock is set up. You don't need to tie anything. But then, we start hitting a limit. You can only have 21 objects together with Ultra Hand. And yet, even if you could combine an unlimited amount of objects in the real world with your Ultra Hand ability, I still don't think it would be as good as Recall. Ultra Hand is good. There's nothing wrong with choosing that. It's just, I still don't think it's as good. We'll get into more of that when we start talking about Recall. Let's move on to the next ability, which is... Okay, so I know this one sounds bad, but it's not as bad as it seems at first. The way that auto build works is that if you have constructed something with Ultra Hand prior, then you can now replicate it much quicker by expending Zonite. And if we're only looking at that part of the auto build functionality, then it would be useless in the modern world because we don't have Zonite and you wouldn't have the Ultra Hand in order to build stuff with beforehand. However, there is one loophole to this. If you have a schematic for something in Tears of the Kingdom, then you can build it without having made it prior. In other words, if you make an instruction manual in the real world, then you can create whatever you want. It just has to be written down beforehand. Of course, you still don't have Zonite, so you can't create objects if you don't have them, but as long as everything you need is in front of you, you can build it in seconds. So jigsaw puzzles would no longer be a problem. You could look at the picture on the box and then construct it in seconds. Or if you want to put together furniture from Ikea, then that's also no longer as frustrating as it should be. On top of that, if you have the instructions for an object, then you can pick it up regardless of how heavy it is, very similar to Ultra Hand. And lastly, if you want to pick a lot of apples from an orchard or collect a lot of the same object, I don't know what it is, then boom, you got it. I'm not saying that auto build is the best choice. I'm just saying that if you brought it into the real world, it would have some functionality. 
Man, Fuse is just, um, it's just the worst. I don't know how I would use it in the modern world. At least for the map and camera ability, I could think, oh, hey, I could take pictures with this, or I could figure out where I am, or I could track where my car keys went. But for this ability, what are you gonna do? Attach a boulder to some chopsticks? And if you do wanna attach things together, you could just do that with Ultra Hand. Ultra Hand does that. It doesn't do it as precisely, but it gets the job done. And, and here's the, the worst part about all of this. Throughout all of Tears of the Kingdom, there are constantly NPCs doing the exact same thing that Fuse does, but they're using their own tools to pull it off. The only thing special about Fuse is that you can take very awkward objects and stick them on the ends of other things, which normally should not be able to stick together. That is it. And I don't know how to use that, so I'm putting it at the bottom of the list. It's the worst ability so far. This is an ability which I don't think a lot of people are talking about because they're like, oh, it's just me, but it doesn't count. But guys, it's on the wheel. It's on the main wheel of abilities. We gotta talk about it. Amiibo is the ability to spawn things into existence by tapping one of your physical Amiibos to a switch. Newsflash, we can do that in the real world. You can grab a switch and an Amiibo, tap it on top of each other, and if you have this ability in the real world, then boom, wah! you got like a bunch of barrels and fish on the ground in front of you. This could potentially solve world hunger because we could just spawn infinite food. You would also be able to summon in a bunch of medieval historic weapons, Zelda clothing, champion's helms, paraglider sailcloths, and Apona. Like you can straight up just create Apona and now you have Apona as a pet horse. That's freaking awesome. However, you can't actually summon an unlimited amount of these things because you can only use each amiibo once per day. So actually, I, you know what, you can't solve world hunger with this, but you could survive the apocalypse potentially because you can summon enough food for yourself. All in all, not a bad choice. It, it looks bad at first, but I would love to have a Pona. I'm not even a horse person. I, I don't ride horses, but I would love to see a Pona in real life. There are also two honorable mentions which have to be talked about. The first one is the teleportation pads that you could get from Robbie. That would be freaking awesome. If you only had one teleportation pad, it's like, okay, that's pretty good, right? You can get to your grandma's house quicker whenever you want to go, but then you got to drive all the way back and it's, it's awkward because if you didn't bring a car to get to your grandma's, then how are you gonna get back? You know, th that's a mess. But if you have two or three teleportation pads, then now you got a round trip. You can go anywhere you want and then get back home really quickly. It's easy to see why the travel medallion would be awesome in that context. And in fact, if you have the travel medallion, you probably have the Sheikah slate as well. So that gives you this GPS tracking device for finding your lost car keys again but it's not one of the core abilities, so I'm not gonna count it in the list. It's a cool one, it's not in the ultimate list though. And then the second one that we gotta talk about is the Earth Wake Manual, which digs up dirt. It, it creates rocks a certain distance in front of you. I, I can personally attest to the fact I have never needed this ability in my life. So I'm just not even gonna talk about it. I don't think there's any practical application outside of self-defense, but you could do self-defense in a ton of ways. You don't need the earthquake ability. Maybe intimidation, that would be one thing it could do because I'd be freaked out if that came towards me, but yeah, we're, we're just skipping it. We're not gonna talk about it any longer. Recall is the ability to rewind one object at a time so that it goes back in time. For instance, if you drop a rock and you use recall on it, then it's gonna go back up in the air. And that seems lame, right? What are you gonna do? Throw a baseball and then catch it again or get back your golf balls you threw in a pond? But this is ignoring the most powerful part of this ability. It, it's ironic. The thing that is powerful is not the ability to rewind one object back in time. The powerful part is that you can freeze time for as long as you want. Why is this so powerful? Okay, well consider this. Have you ever been giving a speech and you start stuttering with your words and you don't know what to say next and you freeze up? This gives you a chance to stop, think about what you're going to say next, or just meditate until you're done being freaked out about the audience. Do you wanna read pages to a book in no time at all? Boom, just use recall. Imagine reading every single book in a library in the span of a week. 
conversations with people would be way easier because now you can think about what you're going to say instead of having to say stuff in the spur of the moment. Recall is the ability to think for as long as you want, and that is not an ability that should be taken lightly. Additionally, if you want to move around stuff and do telekinesis, you can still do that. Recall remembers whatever the last movement of an object was. Simply move each object in your room once, and then you will never need to worry about it again. You could just recall those objects, and they'll come over to you. Imagine the workspace efficiency! It's not unlimited, though. This ability has some limitations. For instance, nowhere in Tears of the Kingdom do we get the indication that you could recall other people. So if you say something embarrassing, you can't undo that. That's not how that works. It's also impossible to use it on yourself consistently. Princess Zelda uses recall on herself one time in the entirety of Tears of the Kingdom. And when she does it, it sends her 10,000 years back in time. Do you know how long 10,000 years is? That would put you in the Neolithic Revolution. Like, farming was just discovered 10,000 years ago in our own timeline. We didn't even invent the wheel yet. Thankfully, it's very unlikely this would happen to you because it only happened to Princess Zelda in a moment of duress, and she's the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, AKA the goddess of time. So it's, it's probable that it only happened to her because she has a more heightened sense of time connection. But for everybody else, I'm pretty sure we're safe. So that's why I believe Recall would be the best ability to have in real life from Tears of the Kingdom. That being said, Ultra Hand is still pretty cool. Amiibo would be very meta, and teleportation, if that were an option, would be incredible. But going by just the base abilities, Recall is the best. And that's all I got down. Unless you want to argue in the comments section about my decision, because I'm always down for a tussle. Or if you want to help the channel, because Lord knows my channel ain't doing too hot right now, then you can become a channel member for only 99 cents a month, which will also get you access to the monthly Breadvesters meeting, which is a 40 minute long chat where I answer your questions and show off future or past projects on the channel. If not though, don't worry about it. Just make sure to take care of yourself. And until I see you next time, have fun, Storm of the Castle.